Can we talk about BL? We can. We can. Can we yeah, talk about BL? Yeah, because I wrote an article last week. Don't do this very often because I don't have much time. But I took it upon myself last week to write an article on on Pep. And the title was Pep BL, the next Zinkanagel. I don't know how many of you read it, but but basically the point is we've got a real gem of a player on our hands. This is a player that we forked out 6 million euros for during the summer. September 3rd, he came in when our Europa League spot was um, determined, like when we had it for sure in the bag. It's a player that scored six goals in nine games at the beginning of this season with three assists. So it's something like 18 goals and 15 assists last season. And it's a player that when he moved from Zaragoza to Copenhagen, he struggled because he played out on the wings. Yep. His numbers, what he became known for, he made that when he moved to the 10 when he started playing false nine he struggled when he played out on the wings so it's no surprise it should be no surprise and who did we make the same mistakes with philip zinkenagel is a player that his best seasons he played out on the right at Boda glimt in norway and as a free role player behind two strikers at Nottingham Forest. And Nottingham Forest, he didn't play behind a lone striker. He played behind two strikers, a mobile striker like Brennan Johnson that used to go out wide on the right and link up with Jed Spence a lot, anyone who watched Forest last season. And then um, target man, uh, Surridge, up front. So when we brought Zinkanago in, I, I, I was saying it all summer. What's he doing out on the left? What's he doing out on the left? Then people said, oh, he's a 10, he's a 10. And Corberan played him in a 10 position behind a lone man striker. Let's not forget, Zink scored two goals for us in four or five games that he played. And a lot, a lot of people weren't happy with him, but he scored two goals. And now he's gone to Liège and he's playing. He's playing well. He scored today against Anderlecht. Something like three goals in five games now for him with Liège. So can't make the same mistake with this player. Start playing him out of position because anyone that went on social media yesterday at half time and read the things that some people were saying about Pep Biel, it was like he was higher on the shit list of some fans than Oleg Rabchuk. Yeah. It and really some of those same fans, by the way, get upset at the fans that will bring up things and criticize Oleg Rabchuk. Some of those were the same people, by the way. It's It was crazy. It's crazy. I mean, BL is, there were, for those of you that listened to the deep dives that I did, there were two players that I was really excited about. Two players during the analysis that I was like, guys, we struck gold with these two players. One of them was Huang Inbaum, and the other one was Pep BL. Pep BL is an amazing player. We, we, ha we don't get, we or we're not accustomed to getting players of that caliber, right? the Daniel Podense is of the world. Like Pep Biel is that class of player. He is that talented. Now, mentality wise, whatever, I, I, we can't see there what, what's going on, but potential technical ability wise, he's in that caliber, like Huang and bomb that level, that caliber. And it's, it's ridiculous that people, that people will continue to make these, these types of discussions about Pep Biel, who has done it everywhere in certain contexts, but we play we play them out of position and then we get upset when they don't perform. So I don't understand some of those fans. I really don't, I don't get it. And if, if we squander a player that we just paid 6 million for un unacceptable. And you saw, you saw the class that he has that finish was unbelievable. That's, but that's the stuff that he, can I, I wouldn't, do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far in a sense that like, that's the kind of, that's the kind of finish I expect from a player like him. So as soon as yeah. you saw the ball drop, you're just like, all right, there's only one thing that's happening now. Is like he's going to curl it into the other. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So it's, for him, it was completely normal. It's just like, yeah. first time shot, it's spinning in front of me. That's 
anyone that's played football that that isn't a defender, the ball drops to you like that in the box on the edge on your good foot. What are you going to do? Like you're going to spin it into the other corner. It's exactly what he did. It was beautiful, and and yeah. because it's been that kind of season, like it it made us overwhelmingly happy. It's like we it's an unbelievable finish, but it's like nah, that's what this player does. Yep, that's what this player does. And, and if it were the only case, if oh, this sorry, were the sorry. only player, no, I mean, my, my thing would be uh, regarding the criticism of Pep Biel, if this were like the only player that we had brought in that did, that was doing well elsewhere and not doing well here, then maybe I would find an excuse. Oh, maybe he just isn't for Libyakos. But there's too many players that we've brought in that were doing things elsewhere. And over the course of the last couple of years, we'll say we bring in, they do nothing for us. For me, for me to believe that it's on the player, it's for me, it's it's a system thing, and we're not using him correctly, and that's why we haven't gotten maybe the best out of him. That's how I see it personally uh, for him, on a whole. So, so th there are a couple of people, and it's been raised in the chat a few, I think a couple of times today, like whether or not we can play Bio and James in a. I think some people are alluding to like a three, four, two, one formation, something like what Atalanta yeah, yeah. you would was doing last season. Uh, I don't think we can do that. Not you, now. Like no, not now. Generally no. speaking, yes, but you need good wing backs. You need overlapping yeah. wing backs. And that's what Atalanta had. Atalanta had great overlapping wing backs. We don't. Oleg on one side is not an he's not an offensive wing back. The, actually, I almost forgot to bring this up, Costa. Um, now that I think about it, it's just something more sad than anything else. Um, this graphic about the attacking prowess of Libyakos on the left side, a third of that XG production on the left was from Kutris against Pasyanina. <laughs> just, to, just to point out that. So, no, we, we can't do that now only because we don't have or at least we don't utilize all of the offensive wingbacks we have. I think in a normal scenario with a with a healthy Gonzalo Avila, on the right, we could make up for that. But you have to have the balance. You have to be able to do that on both sides. We can't have all of our attacks coming on the right or all of our attacks coming up the middle. It has to be balanced. We have to have people, on somebody on the left, somebody on the right, and in the middle that can generate those things. And right now, we can't do that consistently on the flanks for this to be something that is uh, – is a formation that we use standard. 